I looked over at the case and I said, man, that's an old doll. The head turned and looked at me. There's a tall, dark shadow in here. He's very intimidating. He watches you, he waits. Oh my God! That is one of the most incredible voices we've ever captured. I feel like whatever is here is spreading to my personal life. The dollhouse in Greensburg, Indiana has a mysterious and unsolved history. Built in the year 1800, the home only has one documented owner in its past. But rumors of abuse and murder make this a unique investigation for the PBP crew. We took the 500 mile journey to Indiana to find more answers and to confront the alleged demonically possessed dolls inside the home. There was only one other owner besides my grandparents. Um, he never lived here. Uh, he only rented it out. So, as for history and stuff, they didn't document a lot of renters' um, information, but we do know that one family used to live here, and the only reason um, we know of them is because my father-in-law knew the family that lived here, and um, it was a husband and wife and their children, and um, the husband, he was a mean, nasty guy, um, alcoholic, he beat on his wife, and um, so one day, the husband was here in the living room. While Chelsea is speaking, we hear an unexplained bang come from the kitchen. The husband was here in the living room. <laughs> here in the living room with his wife, and the son walked in, and um, he saw his dad beating on his mom, so he took a baseball bat and he hit his dad upside the head. Could the noise that we heard in the kitchen be the abusive old man that was killed? We hope to communicate with him further during our investigation. So, um, as for history of the house, I know it sounds crazy, but that's all we have. Um, like solid, concrete, that's, that's it. Um, we are working with the Historical Society to try to figure some stuff out, but like I said, renters, they don't document anything right. or <laughs> at all. So, um, so none of these dolls were here originally? No. no. So who, who had the idea of bringing all of them in? So, um, when I grew up, my grandmother used to get me a doll every year and I hated it. They stacked up in my closet in their boxes and um, I was scared of them <laughs> as a lot of people are. So when we got this place um, we just kind of brought them in. You know they initiate fear. Sometimes spirit feeds off of fear. So we started putting them in here and I was like you know what would be crazy is if this whole place was filled with dolls and my husband's like that's psycho but great let's do it. So we started buying collections of dolls. Um, most of the dolls like the nicer dolls, um, they all came brand new in the box with their certificate. That's actually what this door, it's locked because there's so many boxes in there that the door won't stay shut. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's no basement, no attic, nothing like that. But um, I guess so then my husband, he was like, the house is so small, why don't we just call it the dollhouse? So we went with it, it stuck, and people are scared. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where I got the name, the dollhouse. Um, so most of these are original. How many of these would you say that you've gotten that they said had some sort of attachment to it? So um, my husband and I always wanted to start collecting haunted items, but we didn't want to bring them to our own home. Mm -hmm. So all of the items around the house that have stories next to them are all supposed haunted items that have attachments. Most of the activity seems to stem from the dolls and various items that Chelsea has collected, including several that are said to have demonic attachments. This cabinet, number one rule, don't open it, okay? <laughs> I don't think we will. <laughs> <laughs> we've had a lot of people open it, so we've had to take the, the knob off, but um, yeah, just number one rule, don't open it. So this story here um, correlates to all of this stuff came together. And then this story here goes with this one. Um, so all of the stuff around here um, supposedly does have a negative energy. Um, a lady had purchased it at a flea market, and she, she restores dolls. That's what she does. So she said she got all this stuff home, and um, she started getting sick. And when I say sick, 
I mean, she found a skin tag like on her skin. Um, it was cancerous. Um, she, w she was really sick, so she started taking these and putting them in her van. And um, then, after this box of stuff was in her van, she, um, her van broke down and she needed like a new radiator and all this stuff. So when she was outside taking the picture of all these items, um, she said she was on her porch and she saw the lights flicker in her house and then she heard a giggle and then lightning struck a tree in her yard wow. while she was taking the picture. So she actually had a church hold these items until she gave them to us. Um, and as she was carrying them to the post office, she twisted her ankle. So, <laughs> and that was before we got this doll. <laughs> is that the one you got today? Or no, yesterday? no, this, this is the older one. Um, this is a demonic doll, supposed. Um, I was warned to use extreme caution when investigating this doll, um, such as holy water, crosses, everything like that. Um, it doesn't, well, it doesn't have a name. I have some demonologist friends, and we believe that we know its name now, but uh, we don't want to speak it in the house yet. But so we call it Helen Handbasket because that's what it is. Um, a group previously had received, pardon my French, but fuck off on an EVP, and um, I had came in here a few weeks ago. A group asked me to come back, and they were like, "You gotta listen to this." They had a voice recorder sitting right here, and they received fuck off on theirs. So. <laughs> that was pretty interesting, but um, yeah, I was just warned um, to use a lot of caution. I guess it is a dark hooded demon, and it likes to hide in the shadows and wait till you're vulnerable. The dark hooded figure that Chelsea just described will play a major role in one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had on an investigation. When I was little, I always used to see spirits in my house, and um, my mom never believed me. <laughs> So this thing, this wardrobe, um, was in my room. I hated it. I never opened it. I used to tell my mom that a man with really long fingernails would try to come out of it and get me. She didn't believe me. She thought it was all my imagination. Until one day, um, the way our house is set up, so my mom's doorway was here and mine is here. So if I was to get out of the bed, she could see me. So. One night, um, she heard me scream, and she woke up, and she looked over, and she saw a dark shadow standing by my bed, and um, she saw my legs sticking off my bed. I got pulled out of my bed by my ankle, and when she ran into my room, I had a bruised handprint around my ankle, and I moved in with my grandparents the next day. Wow. So, <laughs> this had not been opened since I was little. Um, Has nobody tried to open it? it it's been opened now. Um, I have opened it and I have got in it, but I will tell you the very first group that opened it, it was a psychic medium, and she was here. People had asked me to open it before, and I had told them no. And she asked me, and I said, um, yeah, why not? Eventually, it's going to get opened. So she opened it, and when they opened it, their K2 was solid red throughout the whole house, and it, it was doing nothing before. And uh, she started snapping pictures, and they did receive a figure, and it almost... Um, kind of looks like a witch, which I can show you it, but she has like long hair and like a long pointy nose with like a hood on, and um, which always kind of confused me because I always saw like a long man creature with fingers, but that's what she captured. And so um, behind you is the brand new demonic doll. Oh, cool. um, the blue one or is the one in the case? In the case. Wow. Um, do not open the case. Nope. <laughs> um, I have to pull this up on my phone because it is brand new. We just got it today. Um, I will tell you, whatever it is, is very dark. When I opened it early t earlier today, I got very, very sick. And we have had several people leave the house puking, so I just ask that you're careful. The sickness that Chelsea just warned us about will also play a major part in our investigation. Fun fact, <laughs> I was sitting on the couch. Like I said, we just opened this up today. The doll inside was wrapped, so I had to open the case and physically touch the doll. <laughs> nice. And um, I sat the doll in the case, and I leaned it against the couch. I looked over at the case, and I said, man, that's an old doll. The head turned and looked at me. Chelsea then shares some dark and personal experiences that happened to her inside the house. She is not comfortable enough for this to be put out into public, so out of respect, it will not be placed in this documentary. 
we just wrapped up our interview here with Chelsea at the dollhouse. As we were wrapping things up, she told us a very interesting fact that no group that's ever investigated here in the past year that it's been open has ever made it to 3 o'clock in the morning. They all leave. Something scares them out. They can't take the energy in here. Nobody has made it past 3 a.m. We are here for 48 hours. So we're going to find out why that is, I hope. Let's get it. Can you tell us your name? Are you affecting Alex? Do you like having people come in and talk to you? Yeah, yeah, you heard that, right? Yeah, I told yeah. you. As we're reviewing our recorder, listen carefully and you will hear what sounds like the garbage bag in the kitchen being physically hit. After searching the kitchen for open windows or drafts, we found no possible explanation for why this bag moved or was hit. The following 35 minutes were virtually silent, so we decided to split up into teams. Alex and Tyler will enter first. So it's just me and Tyler in here this time. Could you start us off just by turning off that flashlight? It's recording. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, K2. It's the K2 flickering. It's on the shelf right there. Is that you making that flash? Can you do it again? Try to make it go all the way to the red. Keep trying. Is that from whoever's in here? Can you tap on something for us? Bang something? Make a really loud noise for us? Anything you want, any sound you can make. If you're causing that K2 to flicker, can you give it a quick spike up as far as you can? Give it the best grab you got. Spike it right up to red, just real quick. Ta. It's it's trying. Can you make it spike to yellow at least? I believe yellow is the, f the next dot past the second green one. Yeah, 
they said no group's ever been in here past 3 o'clock, and it's almost 3 o'clock, and we're still here. What are you going to do about it? Don't say that, Tyler. Don't say what are you going to do about it. We're not here to provoke you. Though it was not his intention to provoke, Tyler may soon regret asking that question. We just want to know why most people are chased out by three. We want to know what happens at that time or whether it's a specific time or not. Just saw something come out of the wardrobe. You sure? Yeah, it might have been a reflection of the light or something, but... K2 is going nuts over here. Is there a name that you can tell us? After receiving no evidence, Alex and Tyler step out and Xander and I enter. This is one of the most incredible voices we have ever captured. Right after I ask if there's anyone there who wants to talk, a woman comes through and clearly says, Can you hear me? Anybody want to talk? Did we just hear you? What's in that wardrobe closet? What happens if we open it? Yeah. Hundred percent. What's in this case right here that was just brought to the house yesterday? Do you want to say anything? Right here when I put the spirit box up against the case of the brand new demonic doll and ask if it has anything to say, you hear a clear little girl's voice say, no. Do you want to say anything? We know you're here. Wow. Come on. Like, we just want to get to know you. That's all we care about. That is one of the most incredible voices we've ever captured with Spirit Box. Yeah, that was crazy. That's crazy. That's not radio. That was not radio. It is day number two here at the Dollhouse in Greensburg, Indiana. Uh, we wrapped up last night about four in the morning. And after we went to bed, Tyler here had some experiences that we didn't find out about until we woke up. So if you want to just take us through s several incidents that happened uh, last well, night. Start off with everybody was sleeping. I'm the only one laying here in the middle right by the doorway. And I keep hearing noises off to my left and right and out this doorway in the kitchen area. And I kept trying to wake everybody up because I kept hearing loud bangs and you know, footsteps and all that kind of stuff, and 
mean, nobody was waking up. And then you had something happen with your debit card or credit card. Yeah, uh, I feel like whatever's here is uh, starting to affect my personal life, too, because there's, you know, other unfortunate events that had happened, too, um, prior to this. But I got a call about 8 o'clock in the morning uh, after a text message saying that somebody had drained my bank account um, from somewhere in New York. Well, yeah, I'm from New York, but we're in Indiana right now, so that's kind of funny. Um, five minutes after I got that text message, I get a call from the fraud department of my cardholder. Um, so they shut my card off, so I don't have any money now. And, and then your girlfriend got... Oh, uh, yeah, my girlfriend uh, got... Uh, <clears throat> A notification on her phone saying somebody tried to sign into her Facebook account from a place called Stebbins Corners, New York. Um, she texted me this, and she was she was pretty frightened, and I was you know I was concerned. I was like, what's what's wrong? What's the problem? She goes, uh, Stebbins Corner is is my old house. It's the exact address of my old house, and on that property there was about five deaths. Um, three of them were suicides. Um, very, she had paranormal she, experiences she's had paranormal it? experiences at this house before. It, it, it almost led her to suicide herself. There was very dark energy in this property. Um, so and, and I the, feel like whatever is here is spreading to my personal life, you know, in a different state. You know, it sounds crazy, but that's what it seems like. And then on top of that... He got very sick last night. Yes. What time was I, that about? It was uh, a little after I got that phone call. Um, I just rolled over. I was trying to get some sleep. I hadn't slept a, a single bit at all. Um, I just started getting pretty nauseous. So I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna throw up. And I got up and I ran outside and I threw up all over the place. And Chelsea here said that people do get very sick here and have to leave and throw up. Remember, guys, we are the first group to stay the night in this house, to sleep in this house, to spend more than five or six hours here. So, and with new dolls, <clears throat> with supposed demonic attachments, like, we were kind of blind walking in here a little bit. And we still have a whole night ahead of us, and we don't know how it's going to affect us. We don't know, can't say for sure that it's all connected to this house, but it's just awfully coincidental. So, we need to get some answers here tonight and really push it. So let's keep going. Let's not back down now. Stay on your ground and let's keep going. Night has fallen here in Greensburg, Indiana. This is our final night. We are going to push it here. We want answers and we are going to start by opening the wardrobe closet that is said to bring out negative energy here in the home. Oh, my heart's already just started to race just now. <laughs> I'm going to open this. What's attached to this wardrobe closet? Dude, that's a John. Yeah. Is your 
name John? Yeah! Holy fuck! John? Yeah, you didn't hear the yeah? Listen carefully as you will hear two different yeah responses come through after asking the spirit if his name is John. What's interesting is that the second yeah sounds like it's coming from inside the house and not the spirit box. What do you think? Hello? John. John? Dude, that said John. Yeah. Is your name John? Yeah! Holy fuck! John? Yeah, you didn't hear the yeah? Hello? John. John? Dude, that said John. Is your name John? Yeah! Holy fuck! John? Yeah, you didn't hear the yeah? Hi John, nice to meet you. John, did you come out of the wardrobe? Maybe? I don't Dude, this guy's responding, it seems like. We believe that John is the spirit attached to the wardrobe closet that Chelsea used to see as a child. I used to tell my mom that a man with really long fingernails would try to come out of it and get me. Where are you? What room do we stop in? We go back to the wardrobe? What did that say? A monster? Something's coming. Right here, we capture a creepy full sentence of one voice saying, I don't have them. Something's coming. We go back to the wardrobe? What did that say? Immediately after the session, we text Chelsea and tell her about the name John coming through on the spirit box. She tells us that her and another empath had had that name pop in their head in that house. She agrees to an interview over the phone. So, we were just wondering, um, you said you and another empath had the name John come through here. Yeah, not on any device or anything, we just got it, and not even at the same time. We got it out of our head. Because, I'll tell you, when we captured the voice, we were asking who's here, and we had just opened the wardrobe closet, and the spirit box was in it. And we said, it said John. And Alex said, did you just say John? And the same voice came through and said, yeah. So oh, we, f wow. we feel like it was connected to the wardrobe closet. When you, you said that was your wardrobe closet when you were younger, right? Yeah. And you said that you woke up with a man standing over you, a figure? Yeah, yeah. Is there any possible way that that could have been John? Is that maybe why it's you and the other empath had gotten that name here? It absolutely could be. Um, I know the guy that used to live in the house, um, his name was Ivan. But, you know, not just say, where did he get that wardrobe from, you know? Right, right. Um, another thing we heard was, uh, we were walking through the house, and we captured a, a long sentence that said, it was the same voice, it was a man's voice, and it said, I don't have them, something's coming. Oh my god. Yeah. We've never got anything like that there. Alrighty. Alrighty, well, if you need anything, just let me know. Awesome. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Yep, have yeah, a good night. We are. You too, bye. Shit. Two different empaths, including Chelsea. So John. I had John. They've never documented the evidence of physically saying John. And they verified it twice. Because they said That's John, and they said yeah. So That's things nice. are piecing together. And also, like she was saying, she saw a man standing over her when she was a kid with that wardrobe closet. And we had that voice when I stuck the spirit box in the closet. Could that have been John that has been with that wardrobe closet this whole time? Was he the one standing over Chelsea when she was a kid? Yeah, maybe we just let him run around in the house right now. 
Maybe. Something's coming. Something's coming. It's not John. John's already chilling. John's, John's right here. John's hanging out. He's probably, probably, we don't know. probably hanging out. Okay, so the wardrobe closet is open for the night. Now we're moving on to the living room. When you stare into this mirror, supposedly negative things are supposed to happen. Something happened to Chelsea when she was staring into this mirror that we cannot share with you her, her wishes on camera. So we cannot share her experience with something very dark happened to her. And we're going to test out what's going to happen if I stare into this mirror right now. It's called scrying. Okay, ready? It's so heavy. This is weird. I'm starting to see spots. Like after you look into the light for a while, these spots like the pattern of Oh my god! What? Holy fuck! What? What happened? What? What just happened, huh? You gotta hit. I gotta step out. Right. I gotta step out. Don't grab me. Watch out for this camera. Watch out, watch out. I gotta get out. Turn the light on. Go out with me. I don't have shoes on, bro. I don't have shoes on. Dude, take this camera. I don't have shoes on. My shoes are crazy. It took less than three minutes. What are you feeling? What's going on? What'd you see? What the fuck? What'd bro? you see? Feel my heart. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Holy fuck. What did you see? You gotta tell us what you saw, man. You alright? I assume not. I morphed. What do you mean you morphed? I was standing yeah, I there. You were charging at me. I was standing there. I mean, I was nervous going into it. But. When I was standing there, my heart started pounding. I could feel it through my chest, like it is now. And Keep it then I just I was feeling so weird. I was feeling heavy. I was feeling anxiety. And 
there was a fear of looking into my own eyes, staring into it, because it was dark in there, but you could see, you could see, you could make yourself out, and I just started to feel, I started to see spots, like, when you look into su the sun, mm -hmm. and then you look away, and then you just see, I was starting to see that, like, all over the place, and then I just locked eyes with myself in the mirror, and for me, it felt like an eternity, but for, it was probably a few seconds, and I just felt out of body. There was, it was like I wasn't, I was there, but I was looking into somebody else. Like for, I can't even describe it. Like I was standing outside of myself, looking at myself in the mirror. And all of a sudden, I morphed into, in my own eyes, it's, fuck, it sounds crazy. I morphed into a. It was just a hooded figure standing. Shut the fuck up. It was a hood. I could see the hood. I'm wearing a hat, but it was a hood that was hanging over, and it was a dark figure and I morphed into it and I have never been I've never felt that fear just get pushed right you, through me you scared me when you were like I thought I saw I, it. I couldn't see you but I saw you through the lens I thought you were charging at me so I was like oh, there was a sense of pure fear that shot through me and I had to back the fuck I had to get out of that house I'm shaking I'm shaking Jesus Christ I've never experienced, I, I mean, we've done very limited scrining, but I did not expect that. That was intense. That's terrifying. I don't want to do that. Let's take a break. Stop. Cut for a second. For a second, just cut. There is a tall, dark shadow in here. He likes to hang out. He's very intimidating. Um, he watches you. He waits. <sighs> oh, my God. Oh. What? The dollhouse in Greensburg, Indiana is truly one of a kind. From countless haunted dolls and items to an unknown history full of stories and legends, the PBP crew could not have dreamed of a better investigation. We gained answers, concrete evidence, and terrifying experiences to go along with it. Pitch Black Paranormal can now add another chapter in our quest to find answers as to what truly lurks in the shadows.